Ladies and gentlemen, today is a very big day. You probably didn't know it, but it is. And it is because I finally have a reason to open one of these. So this, if you don't know, is a stupidly powerful light bulb from Ikea. This is basically equivalent to the sun shining through a regular window. So I have this in my mom's kitchen and when you turn it on at night, it's literally brighter than during the day with like clear sky and shit. And we get pretty good light. Anyway, so extremely powerful. However, it's been discontinued. So as far as I know, it's been at least here in Germany, it's been it's only been on sale for I think a year, a bit more perhaps. I saw it bought one and then the second time I went there so I go there like twice a year or some shit and yeah, the food is awesome anyway uh, they didn't have it anymore so obviously I panicked right and so now I have two of these in stock two of these in my place here one at home and I think I think this one and that's all I have so I've, I'm looking at them from time to time and scouring eBay and shit and I think last time I went, they did have a 1,800 um, light bulb, but it was way, it was the thinner type, which I have even less confidence in. So the problem with this is it gets stupid hot, so you could definitely not touch it. So it's 60 degrees, 70, 80, 90, probably on top. Um, and it's quite expensive, so I think new it was somewhere around 12, 13 euros, although I might be completely off. I don't know. Anyway, not cheap in any case. So it, it wasn't, so I'm a student and it wasn't cheap enough to, to take one to tear, tear down. So I've been waiting for this moment literally for like one and a half years. I remember this shit and like twice a year, check YouTube and there's still nothing. So now finally, um, my mom uses this quite a lot in the kitchen and it gets super hot in there so this has had quite a hot supper as you can see it's quite quite a bit discolored I hope you can see I don't know anyway it's it's quite a bit yellowed out and it rattles a bit so let's see what that is about so yeah let's proceed to taking it apart this is the first time I'm taking one apart so Let's do it. All right, so this is how this looks. As you can see, the PCB design is pretty good, so they have extremely thick tracks, as they should. But man, this is getting insanely hot. And it's coupling onto what exactly, so... Alright, so this is the LED panel. And again, nothing much to say here. Pretty nice that it's, uh, right, if you watch, uh, what's it called, uh... <clears throat> electron update and stuff so he has very nice um, LED light bulb teardowns and uh, so something worth noting is it's nice that it has this little uh, plug-in style connector it means that no humans are actually required to assemble this and also has the assembly uh, the the guiding pins these two here so it's gonna locate pretty firmly. There's absolutely no wiggle left or right, like rotationally. So that's quite good. Mm, still a pretty expensive bulb, but I guess for the power, it's still good. Good money. Very thick core here. Quite seriously thick, and we have this like white plate. And I'm pretty sure I can lift this right out. Okay, so. This seems to just be a reflector for the light because it's um, it's plastic. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is fairly chunky. And the fact that it's uh, wobbly, I, I, I actually don't think it's uh, because of the thermal stresses, because it doesn't seem that this main part is gooped in. Uh, very, very thick heat sinking. Again, the problem I'm having with this, I don't know, maybe I, again, but I would really have loved to see this these being opened because I if if this sits like this how much they will have some convection but I don't know I these fins exposed wouldn't that be better I don't know anyway so let's try and pull this out I would expect it to just pull right out and there we go and yeah, so they basically assemble this, somehow get it into the plug. Let's see how they got it down there. So yeah, they just basically crimped, crimped this down. Let's see if we can. No, but yeah, they have crimped it down anyway. It seems quite non-trivial to open. All right, there we go. So yeah, they basically just pull the wire through and then pop this little pip in and uh, that's that. So yeah, this is seriously thick. If I would have a proper scale, like I'd say this is... What do I have to weigh it against? I don't know. So this is roughly roughly the same weight as this portafilter. So if you can Google a DeLonghi Dedica portafilter, then that is exactly the same weight, roughly. Yeah, plus minus 20%. And so I'll be right back, perhaps by now tomorrow with this ungooped power supply and maybe we can see what, what went wrong. All right, so I've hot wired it onto a flex and uh, connected the LEDs, hopefully the right way around, but it kinda seems legit, the other way is pretty off. And so yeah, let's plug it in and see if maybe, maybe, perhaps, although I highly doubt it, the wires somehow came loose in here, although, yeah, I kinda doubt it. But let's see. And safety squints on. Nope, well, had to be tried. And next up, I would want to test the voltage on the um, on the outputs. And I could try the LEDs on the power supply, but I doubt that I'll have the required voltage. So I only have a 30 volt power supply, which goes up to like 32, but I don't think that's going to be enough. So let's see. Yeah, so the power supply appears to be dead, so uh, the LEDs might actually be fine. Alright, so now we're done with the unpotting. There's still a bit left, but I mean, yeah, it's pretty tough to extract. Um, so what happened here is this is a single-sided board which gets insanely hot. So we're talking way, way, way too hot to touch. We're talking in the 80, 90, perhaps even 100. Uh, the components are, are high quality. 
So these Aishi capacitors are found in the original uh, MacBook chargers and those are extremely high quality, uh, very nicely made. So this is technically a no-name no brand, but I mean a Chinese brand, but uh, yeah, no, I, I have a very good opinion of them and I've seen them in, in very high quality, quality gear. Uh, and what happens, right, as I've mentioned, is this gets insanely hot when you turn the light bulb on. Especially in the in the kitchen, my mom would turn it on sometimes for like, let's say, an hour, half an hour, turn it back on, back off, so on and so forth, right? And you get these huge cycles. So in the winter, it should be, shit, I don't know, like 20 to 120 to 120 to 120 to 120. To 100. So you have 80 degree, let's assume, right, you have an 80 degree temperature delta. And this is quite, it, it's potted and stuff, right? So let's say it, it's roughly uniform. And this potting compound was 50% sand or whatever they put into it. So it should have been quite thermally conductive, but you still get this huge extraction contraction. And so that's kind of what caused the problem. And uh, if we look even closer, let me get a pointer. Uh, you can see that this joint is cracked and burned. I don't know if you can see the burned part, but trust me it's it's blackened around here and you can also see in the um, in the potting compound this is where all the sparking happened and my mom actually did say that it stopped working she unplugged it right my dad changed it and then I came back home and I was like yeah um, let's see how it doesn't work right plugged it back in and it worked for another like a month or so so yeah and then it crapped out again and now it didn't work at all right as you've seen so this stuff there is, is rather black and um, the potting compound on that side was also darkened around this area so this is an actual actually an inductor and surprisingly enough it has three taps uh, so two here which are common together and uh, the other side has just one right so technically if it would have been a four pin job I should have been fine for a lot longer at least and uh, yeah so it moves quite a bit so this definitely should have been the main issue and who's to blame right so first of all IKEA could have went to a double-sided board right a because a copper coating on this side and then you would have a little um, circle of, of copper here right a via and then you would fill that with uh, solder and then that should be way way tougher uh, they haven't right and it's definitely way cheaper to do it this way but i don't know right i don't know then you get all of this in a landfill right this is half a kilo of metal Pfft. yeah i don't know might be the way the cookie crumbles but it's still not chill right double-sided board with vias properly soldered with solder all the way through right because electron update did find double-sided uh, boards with solder just on this side right unproperly soldered and then you you pay for the double-sided load and uh, board and uh, you don't get the benefits anyway and the second culprit i would say is rho hs right the eu um so removal of har harmful substances basically don't allow so uh, lead and solder so it gets incredibly more brittle as you can see right it's super matte and shit so this is definitely solder free uh, uh, solder free uh, lead free and so it becomes even more brittle and it creates uh, solder how's it called solder little little growths of uh, solder so yeah, probably if you would have had a double-sided board and or uh, lead-based solder, then this should have been avoided. And so this, as I've said, was the main issue. And what I've noticed whilst unpotting it uh, is the uh, perhaps this is the reservoir capacitor for the for the controller. This one is also very cracked. So what I'll do now is I'll go with the soldering iron above most of the critical components and uh, yeah, let's see if it works. Oh 
Okay, so now I've uh, resoldered the inductor, the uh, reservoir capacitor. No, did I say reservoir? So this is the, I think it's called the bootstrap capacitor, and this would be, that's uh, not the reservoir, this would be the output capacitor for the LEDs, and it doesn't have a reservoir capacitor, because uh, probably rides the sine wave a bit better and should have a pretty good uh, power factor. I don't have one of those meters, but I would assume it's uh, not terrible. Anyway, so I've redid the uh, main inductor here, here, and here. Uh, the switching transistor I also redid, that was fine. Uh, this bootstrap capacitor, right? so this basically provides a power supply for this IC which turns this on and off to activate this, uh, to use this, uh, it's basically a buck converter I would assume. Uh, so this was quite uh, loose and uh, also this capacitor here was also very loose. And the rest, I've I've done some of them, not all of them, and it should be fine. So I would even I would even argue that now it should should work. So let's zoom back out and uh, to catch all the pop when it does happen. And... All right, so we are ready for a test. Let's see. We'll stand back for no reason. But yeah. Fuck. It doesn't work now, does it? Shit. I had quite high hopes actually, to be honest. So Alright, so let's test the output voltage. Absolutely zero. Okay. Yeah, so I think can't really be AC though. Huh? So I think this is where I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna go edit the video and uh, yeah. So probably because of all the cracking and uh, of all the flaming and stuff around this area, uh, perhaps the the controller I see, which by the way has a custom part number, so I don't think that's gonna be of use to anyone. So probably that one died and if that one's dead, right, not much can be done. The bridge rectifier measures out fine. Mm, the resistors and chokes I don't think are fucked up and uh, no capacity. There's no fuse. At least there appears to be none and um, so yeah that's rather sad but I think the LEDs are fine so perhaps I'll do something with that but apart from that not much. Well, it is what it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.